The Milky Way galaxy has a problem. In fact, it's not just the Milky Way, but every galaxy in the entire universe. They are spinning too fast, and to this day we still don't know why. Enter dark matter. In 1884, a talk given by William Thomson, also known as Lord Kelvin, of which the unit of temperature is named for, explained the observations he made regarding the velocity of stars orbiting the centre of the Milky Way galaxy. His estimates and measurements of gravity far exceeded the mass we could actually see. He concluded that there must be something besides what we can see, in fact, around four to six times as much. In 1896, Fritz Zwicky coins the term Dunkel Materia when he infers its existence using the Viral Theorem. Then in the 1970s, this idea was expanded upon by astrophysicists such as Vera Rubin and Ken Ford. Measuring the velocities of galactic rotation showed that the stars at the edge of the Milky Way were moving about as fast as the stars near the centre. Again reaffirming six times the mass than what we otherwise observe. Dark matter became a very real phenomenon and even to this day we aren't quite sure what it is. Although we now have more evidence than just star velocities to back up the mystery. Proposals for dark matter are numerous, including a reworking of general relativity. But as we have all come to appreciate over the last 100 years, betting against Einstein is not as easy as that, and evidence today is consistent with the theory. So let's discuss the evidence first. Besides rotational velocities in spiral galaxies, mass can be estimated in three different and independent ways regarding galaxy clusters. The scattering of radial velocity for each galaxy in the cluster, X-ray detection of gases allowing us to measure the density and pressures and thus give us the gravity, and one more method you may be familiar with, gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is a consequence of general relativity and proposes light would curve through areas of space with larger gravity and mass. Measuring this light, we can see distorted images of galaxies behind nebula or other close or larger galaxies that would otherwise be obscured by our view of them from Earth. Acoustic oscillations on baryonic matter, which are basically slight fluctuations in objects such as stars or even black holes, are well studied today since we have a star only 8 minutes away from us to play with. These oscillations compare how different types of matter behave on large scales as they interact. This can be used as a standard candle for measuring large scale lengths. This data is found in the CMB as well as the Sloan Digital Sky Survey in New Mexico and the 2DF Galaxy Redshift Survey. Redshift measurements of spatial distortions and absorption lines are other surveys that constrain the models and further increase the accuracy of dark matter evidence and are some of the most impactful and useful ways to measure the universe, with not just dark matter and dark energy, but in determining the elements present in stars and other cosmological objects. If you have not seen my previous videos on the size of space and dark energy, I highly suggest you watch them as they discuss the energy density of a flat universe as we observe. The energy density calculated for dark energy and baryonic matter leaves the remaining 27% to dark matter and is just another piece that fits the ongoing puzzle. Given all the evidence, it's hard to find any other theory of gravity that can account for dark matter, and it's generally accepted in the scientific community that dark matter is most assuredly made up of particles. However, the standard model of particle physics, whilst considered by many a complete theory since the last missing piece, the Higgs boson, was discovered back in 2013, does not account for dark matter, leaving the door open to various ideas as to what it could be. 
We know what dark matter cannot be using the following things we know about cosmology. Dark matter must be cold. If it were warm or hot, it would not have enough time to create the small-scale structures, such as galaxies and clusters, that we know and love today. It would be collisionless, that is to say, it doesn't interact with normal matter, or even itself. Normal matter has cooled and radiated a lot of its heat, which allows those structures. Yet dark matter has not settled into small structures, remaining highly dispersed compared to the high clumping of normal matter via both electrostatic forces and gravity. That being said, it may still collide with matter rarely, which is the basis for various detectors aimed at finding dark matter, but thus far remains unobserved. We know dark energy is smooth and persistent throughout the universe, but dark matter tends to stick around other areas of mass through its gravity, and so is not so smooth nor does the amount of dark matter increase in quantity as evident in today's observations in the CMB data. So here are the ideas. Marchos, or massively compact halo objects, white dwarf stars, neutron stars, brown dwarfs and even black holes fill this category. But this idea went out of favour since even these objects emit light in other wavelengths such as infrared, radio and x-ray. Neutrinos fit the bill as well, being matter, very abundant and dark. But they are so tiny that they could not account for the mass associated with dark matter. Weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs, are predicted in a subclass of the standard model called supersymmetry. But failure to detect them via the Large Hadron Collider, along with no presence of any supersymmetry indicators, also cast out here. Finally, the most promising candidate, in my opinion, is the axion. Besides being a possible solution for the charge parity problem related to quantum chromodynamics, which we won't get into this video, it's a strong candidate for dark matter since the models predict it would quickly lose its kinetic energy present at the Big Bang and fall into a cold, low-mass state that would not permit decay into other particles. It would have low interactions with the strong and weak nuclear forces and carry no electric charge. Many experiments are underway that attempt to create axions via strong magnetic fields. The model suggests an axion would become two photons which would be detected both in the lab and coming from our sun's intense magnetic field. A reverse approach attempts to create axions by passing photons through a magnetic field and measuring the energy loss associated with the axions as they would not interact with the photon detector. Thus a loss of energy would be observed. Currently we have not detected axions. Many believing experiments are not sensitive enough for their evidence to appear. And with many other suggested models that don't require axions still being explored, it is difficult to gauge what the outcome for them will be. Whilst scientists attempt to detect these theoretical particles in the lab, astronomers using the aforementioned detection methods have created a map of dark matter generated from real astronomical data. It shows how diffuse and spread out dark matter is compared to traditional mass-like stars. In particular, the bullet cluster is compelling evidence of dark matter as two clusters of galaxies collide. As the galaxies within the clusters pass each other, gases disperse in a way that can only be explained by something with gravity, yet invisible to us nonetheless. What's your theory that explains dark matter? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you as well. And if you would like to support J Theory, hit the like button or go to patreon.com slash jtheoryscience. Have a great day.